the fight during the 23rd World Tournament between Goku and Piccolo Jr. was one of the most legendary fights in the entire series, featuring many of Goku and Piccolo's best moments. The fight comes down to a rousing conclusion when Goku's sudden revelation that he could fly allows him to catch Piccolo Jr. off guard, headbutting him straight in the chest. The powerful speed Goku was flying at immediately renders Piccolo Jr. unconscious as Piccolo Jr. lands outside the bounds of the arena. Just like that, Goku is crowned the winner of the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. Goku smiles, reveling in his victory. However, this is where events start to unfold differently. In this version of events, Kami doesn't hesitate whatsoever. As the rest of the Z fighters go up to Goku to celebrate his victory, they distract Goku momentarily. This means that no one could stop Kami from doing what needs to be done. Not even going up to congratulate Goku, Kami immediately makes his way towards Piccolo Jr. Kami stands on top of Piccolo Jr., his face set in a grim expression. Taking one's own life was never an easy task, but Piccolo Jr. was his mistake, a mistake that he had created, a mistake that he had deeply regretted all these years. But finally, now everything will come full circle. The life and legend of Kami and Demon King Piccolo will finally end here. Kami raises his hand up and plunges his hand straight through Piccolo Jr's chest. Piccolo Jr, who was too injured to move, couldn't even defend himself as his life slowly fades away. Goku, who suddenly felt the absence of Piccolo Jr's key, widens his eyes in surprise. Goku yells out Kami's name as everyone turns their head to look at Kami in confusion. Kami was slowly disappearing. Now there was just a faint silhouette. Kami, however, still had a smile on his face. He tells Goku. He knows that with Goku as the next Guardian of Earth, Earth will be in good hands. Someone like him, who had to banish the evil from his heart, was never fit to be a good Guardian. Goku yells in anguish as all the Z fighters rush forward towards Kami. But they never made it in time as Kami's body finally disappears in a white light, completely erasing the world of any presence of Kami and Demon King Piccolo. As usual, Yajirobe arrives, pretty confused about the somber and depressed atmosphere everyone was giving off. He feeds Goku a senzu bean as Goku jumps back up. The once joyous mood was no longer present, and Goku also partially blames himself for Kami's death. The meteor combination that he had performed beforehand against Piccolo Jr. should have been enough to finish the match. If he just hadn't let his guard down, maybe then Piccolo Jr. wouldn't have injured him, and maybe then he would have been able to stop Kami from taking his own life. Kami had paid the price for Goku's carelessness, and Goku vows never to make the same mistake again. Meanwhile, Goku continues pondering upon the situation. Initially, he never intended to accept the position of Kami, despite already knowing Kami's intentions a while back. But this was Kami's dying wish. And regardless of how he truly felt about the matter, there was nothing he could do but heed Kami's dying quest. Similar to Canon, Goku bids goodbye to the rest of his friends for now as he and Chi Chi head off. However, instead of going over to Mount Paozu to find a place to settle down for the next 5 years, Goku instead urges Nimbus upwards, up and up into the clouds towards Kami's lookout. At the lookout, Goku greets a sad looking Popo. 
Popo was sad that Kami had left them. But now, there was a new guardian that he could serve. And he would make this new guardian the best one to ever be. Goku smiled sheepishly. He would have to rely on Popo for now. Because he honestly had no idea what this job entailed. Goku asked Chi Chi whether she minded that they would live here from now on. Chi Chi was initially hesitant. She didn't really want to live in the clouds for the rest of her life. But seeing Goku's earnest expression, she relents. Using Nimbus, she would still be able to go down from the lookout whenever she needed to purchase groceries and such. So now, we enter the timescape in between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And I decided that I'll cover these next 5 years in depth. Goku starts taking up his duties as Kami. Obviously, Kami duties doesn't mean that Goku would neglect his training either. In fact, Goku trains even harder here than he did in the original timeline. No Kami meant no Dragon Balls. And no Dragon Balls means no second chances. He needed to make sure that he was strong enough to face any threat that would come Earth's way. In fact, sometimes Goku even went into the hyperbolic time chamber a few months at a time to polish his skills even further. Though he doesn't spend too much time in there due to the intense amount of pressure that it puts on the body. Gohan is still born like usual, however, here Chi Chi is much more receptive to Gohan receiving some training from Goku. After all, they were Earth's for front defense. In fact, Chi Chi herself had kept up with her own training as well. One extra thing Goku wanted to do, however, was investigate Kami's true origins. From what Popo had told him, Kami had come from a distant planet. Goku had passed the spaceship over to Buma, hoping Buma could get it up and running. But he was still reluctant to leave the planet. If he had, there would be no one left here to safeguard Earth. Buma volunteered to go on her lonesome, but Goku also didn't want to risk any more lives. Just like that, 5 years go by. Unfortunately, Piccolo Jr. won't be the last challenge Goku faces. Reddit prepares himself as he nears his destination. His spaceport crash lands onto the wastelands. Reddit steps out ready to find Kakarot using his Scouser. However, what awaited him outside his spot surprised him greatly. He didn't expect Kakarot to already be waiting for him there. Goku had seen Redis' space spot from Kami's lookout. Earth didn't have many other world visitors, and most of the time when there were, they harbored nefarious intentions. Reddit smirks, asking Kakarot how he had detected him landing here. After all, it didn't look like Kakarot had a scouser of his own. Goku merely cocks his eyebrow in confusion. He didn't know who this Kakarot guy was and what a scouter was either. He ignores Reddit and instead decides to question Reddit why he came to Earth. Reddit tells Goku that he was here to recruit him for their cause, to defeat Frieza. But it looks like Goku still hadn't properly done his job yet, which was to exterminate the living beings on this planet. Seeing Goku's bewildered expression, Redis was also confused, so he decides to just explain everything to Goku, proceeding to explain to Goku his true origins, the Saiyans and Frieza. It was a lot of information to absorb. Goku was seemingly calm on the outside, but inwardly, was a flurry of emotions. Reddit's being his long lost brother didn't matter. The main issue was Reddit's intentions and the fact that Reddit still felt slightly stronger than him and it looked like Reddit wasn't here on good terms. Looks like there was no choice but to fight. Goku tells Reddit to leave. He doesn't care who Reddit is but if Reddit was here to hurt his home he would have to go through him first. Goku prepares his fighting stance. Reddit smirks. His scouter showed that Goku was at a measly power level of 100. This was gonna be a cakewalk. However, 
Goku immediately throws off all his weights. The fight with Piccolo Jr. had taught him never to hold himself back and to always be on guard. He will never lose a fight because of his carelessness ever again. Goku yells as he powers up, his aura flaring. Reddit washes in shock as Goku's power level goes all the way up from 100 to 900. This power level that Goku has is significantly higher than the Goku that we saw in canon, which was still in the 400s. But this 900 was still quite a bit behind Reddit's 1500 power level. And without Piccolo to assist him here, this fight was still going to be one where Goku has a significant disadvantage. Goku charges forward, meeting Reddit's punch for punch. Immediately, it was clear that Reddit had the upper hand, but Goku's refined and superior martial arts technique was able to temporarily allow Goku to keep up with Reddit, albeit with some difficulty. During the fight, however, Goku notices Reddit's tail hanging freely. The adrenaline and excitement from this fight has caused Reddit to let his gut down. Goku knows what he has to do next. Taking a punch to Reddit's face, Goku suddenly ducks and rolls, ending up right behind Reddit. Reddit turns around, a scowl on his face, annoyed at Goku's tenacity. However, Goku had already achieved his objective. Goku barely manages to grip Reddit's tail on time as Reddit suddenly feels his entire body becoming weak. Reddit falls to his knees, realizing that he had fallen prey to Goku's cheap tricks. Reddit inwardly panics as he begs Goku for mercy. However, in Reddit's mind, he knew that as soon as Goku let go of him, he would be able to take care of Goku. Goku here is still a pretty naive person. Even Kami's death wouldn't change his nature. However, compared to Goku in canon, he is much more wary and cautious. After all, it was his own lack of caution that had led to Kami's death. Goku hesitates, thinking about the pros and cons, but he ultimately decides for the safety of Earth, for the safety of his family, letting Reddit go was simply too risky. Goku detested winning against an opponent with cheap tricks, but here he had no other choice. Goku grits his teeth in frustration as he punches Reddit mercilessly over and over and over again. Reddit speeds up blood as he struggles futilely against Goku's grip. Goku, deciding that Reddit had enough, finally lets go of Reddit as Reddit stumbles to the ground. At this point, Reddit was injured badly and he was almost completely immobile on the floor. He tries to slowly crawl away back to his spaceport. Goku ponders on whether to spare Reddit. However, he decides to choose to spare Reddit this time around. He still wasn't one to kill his opponents unless it was necessary. However, if Reddit decided to come back after this, Goku still doubted his own ability to take Reddit down. And that was being overly optimistic that Reddit wouldn't contact any of his allies. Even excluding that fact, Reddit was still a ticking time bomb. Thus, Goku knew where he had to go next, the hyperbolic time chamber. He needed to squeeze in as much training in as possible in a short amount of time. Meanwhile, Reddit flees into space, humiliated and ashamed. He had lost to his little brother, someone who was deemed the lowest of the lowest of Saiyans. Reddit reluctantly opens the communication channel in his scouter that connected him to Napa, as he informs Napa of the events that had transpired. Naturally, Vegeta was beside Napa as well, and he hears of Reddit's failure as he insults Reddit, calling him a disgrace. Vegeta and Napa then come together to a unanimous agreement. They would come over and put Kakarot in his place. Vegeta was pretty interested in how Kakarot had managed to surpass Reddit. Maybe there really was something special about him. Reddit decides that he would do some training as well. He definitely didn't want to 
to disappoint Vegeta and Nappa when they arrived a year later. He was going to be the one to take down Kakarot. But even saying this, Redis' self-training was slow and inefficient. And it was plain and simple why. Reddit simply has no experience training whatsoever. Meanwhile, Goku steps into the White Room of Hell, known as the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. One year of training in one day. Time to make this training count. As Vegeta and Nappa embark on a journey towards Earth, the two Saiyan brothers each embark on their own separate training. The 10 times gravity in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber allows Goku to progress rapidly. He hasn't ever trained under such a high intensity for such a prolonged period of time. Many times in the hyperbolic time chamber, Goku felt the urge to exit and throw in the tower. After all, he was all alone inside, and all he had was his own motivation to push himself. But remembering Kami's dying wish, Goku pushes on, unwavering. Reddit's meanwhile struggles to find a way to really train himself properly. He didn't have the experience or motivation that his brother has. And Reddit was still pretty cocky that he could best his brother the next time he went over. After all, the last time they fought, he was still quite a bit stronger than Goku. And the only reason Goku won that fight was because Goku managed to catch him off guard. Well, that's what Reddit thinks. A day later, Goku exits the time chamber. His power was through the roof. The intensity of the hyperbolic time chamber was not something to be scoffed at. In one year, similar to how Goku's power level went from 400 to 8000 on King Kai's planet, Goku's power here went from 900 to a whopping 18,000. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any of the techniques from King Kai, like the Kaioken or the Spirit Bomb, but his power was a good 2.5 times higher. The remainder days of the year, Goku takes it slightly easier, though he still does train from time to time. He instead focuses his efforts on Gohan. Gohan, ever since the age of 1, had already began his training journey. So Gohan's key control was already pretty good. Obviously, Gohan's training here won't be as tough compared to what Piccolo had put Gohan through in the original canon of events. But combined with the head start that Gohan has and Goku's constant guidance, Gohan's power was rising very steadily. Chi Chi herself was also training herself pretty intensely on Kami's lookout alongside people like Krillin, Yamcha, Tenshin Han, and Chaozu. Just like that, one year passes by. Seeing two pods pass by the planet he was residing on, Reddit goes into his own spaceport as well. Now, three spaceports descend onto the atmosphere of Earth, flying towards the city. Goku doesn't want the fight to happen in the city because civilians could be harmed. So, Goku intercepts the spaceports halfway, literally catching them in midair and throwing them the other direction. All three Saiyans widen their eyes in surprise as their spaceports are sent plummeting towards the wastelands. The space pods crash and tumble. Vegeta comes out, his fists clenched, now super irritated and mad. He was gonna get back at Kakarot for that. Goku flies over to greet them. Behind him, the rest of the Z fighters including Chi Chi, but excluding Gohan, also arrive at the scene. Both Goku and Chi Chi had agreed that something like this was still too dangerous for Gohan. At first, Vegeta wanted to insult Kakarot and gloat, wanting Kakarot to understand that low-class Saiyans like him stood absolutely no chance against the Saiyan elite. But that disrespectful act of throwing his spaceport made Vegeta dismiss all formalities, choosing to simply sack Nappa at Kakarot. Nappa runs towards Goku, but Goku disappears from his line of sight. Vegeta manages to follow Goku's movements, but Nappa couldn't. Before Nappa even understood what had happened, Goku had already taken care of him, choosing to simply throw him aside. Reddits and Vegeta were shocked at Nappa's swift defeat. Reddits currently stood at a power level of 4000, around Nappa's level, 
but nowhere near the likes of where Goku and Vegeta were at. As Reddit slowly attempts to flee the scene, Goku and Vegeta engage with each other. The rest of the Z fighters surround Reddit, not intending to let him escape a second time around, leading to another fight between the Z fighters and Reddit. Goku and Vegeta's fight is pretty clear cut. Goku came out of the hyperbolic time chamber at a power level of 18,000, and after another year of leisure training, he put him at 24,000 of power level. So even without Kaioken, Goku was still a level above Vegeta. From Vegeta's point of view, Goku was like an immovable wall, effortlessly repelling all of his advances. The other fight however was more one-sided. The strongest fighter there was still Tian Shin Han at 1830, with basically all the humans pretty close to Tian's power level besides Chao Tzu. But Reddit was at 4000, so even outnumbering Reddit 5 to 1, the humans barely managed to hang on. Goku could tell that they were struggling, so he wound up a powerful punch that completely knocks the air out of Vegeta, leaving Vegeta winded as he stumbles backwards. Goku goes over, literally one-shotting Raditz with a punch to his face, as the rest of the humans heave a sigh of relief. Goku turns his attention back to Vegeta, and instead sees a moon above Vegeta's head. Vegeta had created an artificial moon, fully intending to utilize all he had at his disposal to crush Kakarot. As Vegeta transforms, Goku suddenly realizes that he was the one to kill his grandpa Gohan. And sensing a momentarily lapse of concentration, Vegeta fully exploits Goku's momentary weakness as he rushes at Goku with immense speed. Despite his bulky frame, Vegeta's speed as a great ape was still nothing to be scoffed at. Vegeta's power ball, along with the beating that Goku had gave him beforehand, had already significantly dropped his own base power all the way down to 11,000 from 18,000. But a 10 times multiplier from the Great Ape still put him at 110,000, almost 5 times stronger than Goku. Without Kaioken, Goku was basically a sitting duck. Everyone watches on in horror as Vegeta nearly crushes Goku in his grip. The Z fighters mobilize themselves as they try to cut Vegeta's tail off. As usual, Vegeta showcases his fighting prowess and awareness by effortlessly dodging all of their attacks. Well of course, that is until Yajirobe comes in to save the day, catching Vegeta off guard as he didn't expect a 7th fighter to show up on the team. Vegeta drops back to his base form, severely weakened but still somewhat in fighting shape. There wasn't any spirit bomb to save them here, and even a weakened Vegeta is still leagues ahead of everyone there. Goku was also still too injured to continue the battle. Vegeta was weakened, severely so. His power had dropped to a mere fraction of what it was before, from 18,000 all the way down to 5,000. However, it was still more than enough to take care of the rest of the humans. The Z fighters scatter, trying to get some distance between them and Vegeta. Vegeta chased them down without hesitation going for the weakest foe first, which was Chao Tzu. Chao Tzu is literally knocked unconscious with a single punch, but then Tien comes in to save Chao Tzu before more harm could be inflicted onto him. Chi Chi, Kulin, and Yamcha decide to throw caution to the wind as well, and simply all went in to attack Vegeta behind Tian Shin Han. However, this was a fruitless endeavor. Everyone was thrown aside, and Chi Chi was left for last. Vegeta could tell that Chi Chi held some significance to Goku, so he decided that he would get rid of her first. Goku tries to get up, but his body fails him as he collapses back onto the ground. As Vegeta advances on Chi Chi, Chi Chi frantically scrambles backwards. However, her back was soon to the wall, and she had nowhere to go. Vegeta had a smirk on his face as he prepared a key blast to finish Chi Chi off. However, suddenly there was a loud cry of anger from the sidelines. Vegeta looked confused 
as he turned over. But before he could even react, something barreled right into Vegeta's chest, knocking the wind out of him. Vegeta was already pretty injured at this point, and this was the final straw. Vegeta collapses to the ground, utterly exhausted as he finally lay in defeat. The person who had dealt the finishing blow was none other than Gohan. Gohan was barred from Chi Chi to join the fight, but he still secretly came to spectate him. Seeing the brutality that Vegeta displayed against his close ones had made him really mad. Gohan advances on Vegeta as Vegeta tries to crawl back slowly to his space pod. Gohan, no! Goku yells at Gohan to stop. He didn't want Gohan to commit an act of killing so young. Gohan stops in his tracks as his temporary anger leaves him. What was he doing? Gohan steps back, but he doesn't allow Vegeta to flee. He kicks Vegeta's space pod as hard as he could as the space pod flies into the wilderness, now nowhere to be seen. Vegeta curses under his breath. Now he was under the mercy of Kakarot's son, and it didn't help that his own two underlings were also pathetically weak. Gohan beats Goku a Sanzubian, and Goku stands back up all refreshed and ready to go. Goku stands on top of Vegeta, contemplating. Vegeta didn't want to admit it, but during that moment, it was the first time in his life that he was truly afraid. His life being completely in someone else's hands. Just then, Buma arrives on the scene in her plane. Goku asks Buma for a favor. Could she take the three Saiyans to Capsule Corporation to recuperate? Buma looks at Goku as if he had grown an extra head. Goku continues, telling Buma to let him know when they were about to recover. Obviously, Goku's decision was contested by all the humans. They didn't want three dangerous individuals roaming Earth. However, Goku reassures them. By the time the three Saiyans recovered, they would no longer be a threat. As Buma takes Vegeta, Nappa and Raditz away, Goku flies to the lookout once more. He intended to spend even more time in the hyperbolic time chamber, just enough to surpass Vegeta's great ape transformation. Because of Kami's incident, he had resolved never to fully let his guard down, even though he still gave the three Saiyans a second chance. Raditz and Nappa awaken, immediately struggling to get up but Vegeta tells them to pipe down. Kakarot had so helpfully spared their lives. For now, they would lie low, and once their injuries were recovered, they would strike. After about 4 hours in the hyperbolic time chamber, which equates to 2 months of training, Goku exits the hyperbolic time chamber, his power already surpassing the likes of Great 8 Vegeta, now sitting comfortably at a power level of 190,000. However, now stood an issue that he had left to fester for too long. He could only use the hyperbolic time chamber for about 10 months or 20 hours in real time before it would lock him in forever. And then Goku decided he would have put this off for far too long. It was time to investigate Kami's true origins. It was time to go to planet Namek. Buma already had Kami's spaceship ready to go. Bahashi had embarked on a new side project, which was integrating the Saiyan space pod technology into Kami's spaceship, such that it could move faster. Once the three Saiyans recovered, Goku would bring them to planet Namek along with him. They were too dangerous to leave unattended on Earth. As the three Saiyans recovered enough to walk and move, Goku confronted them. All three Saiyans immediately tense up at the side of Goku. However, Goku tells them to relax. He was here with a proposition. He was going to Planet Namek, and the three of them would go with him. Vegeta laughs, asking why any of them would ever listen to Kakarot. However, Goku simply pointed out that they were no match for him anymore, not even with the Great Eight transformation. Vegeta laughs again, but Goku shows just a fraction of his true power, knocking all three things back. They didn't have any scouters nor could they sense Goku's power, but Vegeta knew that Goku's power had risen a lot from their last battle. 
well, more than his own hand. Verdina tells Raditz and Nappa to back down, as they decide to begrudgingly tag along with Goku. As Goku bids farewell to Earth, a certain someone was contemplating his next move. This person was none other than Frieza, who was currently still at his own planet. Having not made his move to planet Namek, because Goku had never mentioned the existence of the Dragon Balls, the Vegeta, Nappa, or Raditz. Thus, Frieza himself also doesn't know about them. Unlike Goku's own trip to Namek in canon, which was filled with some insanely tough training, the Four Saiyans trip here was relatively tame in comparison. Goku wasn't fully comfortable with the Three Saiyans just yet, and had his gut up at all times. Therefore, he just stuck to some image training. Vegeta was the only one who pushed himself during this trip, asking his two loyal henchmen Raditz and Nappa to keep an eye out on Kakarot while he pushed himself to its absolute limit. Vegeta refused to be weaker than Kakarot any longer. Unfortunately, this training that Vegeta did was at one times gravity, so Vegeta's gains weren't too apparent putting his power at about 36,000 by the end of the trip. Goku and the other two themselves didn't gain much in strength either. As they land on planet Namek, Goku tells the other three Saiyans to take his lead. If any of them go rogue, he would have to put them down. Vegeta scoffs, but otherwise keeps silent. Goku flies over to the nearest key signature, with the other three Saiyans following closely behind. Goku arrives at the village, with many Piccolo lookalikes looking warily at them. An old looking Namekian walks up to the Saiyans, asking them to state their purpose here. Goku scratches his head. He didn't know how to phrase this, but he said that there was a Namekian on their own planet as well, and he simply wanted to know more about the Namekian race. In the depths of his mind, Goku also wanted to ask about the Dragon Balls as well but he didn't feel comfortable approaching that topic with Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz behind him. Elder Mori continues staring down Goku, not saying a single word. Goku scratches his head with a hint of uneasiness, but suddenly Mori tilts his head upwards, looking towards the sky. Goku looks even more confused now. Vegeta taps his fingers impatiently. However, Suddenly, Mori tells Goku to fly in that general direction until they see a weird looking house. There, they would find the answers they seek. Goku nods, flying off again with the three Saiyans in tow. Arriving at a weirdly shaped house with a Namekian outside, the Namekian gestures for them to follow as they enter the large house. Sitting at a large throne was the biggest Namekian that they have seen so far. It was Grand Elder Guru. Grand Elder Guru asked Goku to step forward first. Before he could tell Goku anything, he would have to gauge his intentions. Goku steps forward warily, but otherwise complies with Guru's request. Guru places a hand on Goku's head as he looks through all of Goku's memories. Guru nods his head. He knew that Goku was here with good intentions. So he decided to bestow upon Goku something extra, a power up as we would say. Goku suddenly feels a well of power opening up within him. Goku suddenly powers up all the way, pushing everyone there back as the three Saiyans look on in shock. Goku looks at himself in amazement. Previously having only a power level of 200,000, considering how Guru's power unlocking works, where Krillin got a 5.2 times boost, while Gohan got a 7.77 times boost originally, Goku will probably get somewhere around a 6.5 times boost, putting him at around 1.3 million in base power level. Of course, Guru's power increase doesn't just stop there. Krillin's power had steadily risen throughout the Frieza saga thanks to Guru's potential unlock, all the way 30 times up from 2500 to 75,000. So Goku's power here would probably stagnate at around 6 million plus by the time Guru's potential unlock runs out its effectiveness. Of course, this doesn't even include any increase in strength that Goku gets from here on out. Meanwhile, 
the three Saiyans behind Goku were completely dumbfounded. Vegeta grits his teeth in anger. Could Kakarot finally be a Super Saiyan? He immediately demands that Guru do whatever he did to Kakarot to him right away. However, Guru immediately declines Vegeta's request, stating that Vegeta wasn't worthy as of now to receive such a power-up. Vegeta steps forward towards Guru threateningly, but Neo immediately steps in front of Guru protectively. Vegeta could also tell that Neo was in fact still stronger than him currently, Neo being 42,000 above Vegeta's own 36,000. Vegeta reluctantly steps down, still glaring straight at Neo. Meanwhile, Guru communicates telepathically with Goku, stating that the Namekians would help him with his other problem. Of course, this entire plan has to be carried out under the noses of Vegeta, Raditz and Nappa. Looking through Goku's memories, Guru planned to use the Namekian Dragon Balls to help Goku revive Kami. After all, Kami was the son of Katas, someone who was a dear friend of his. Guru communicates his orders telepathically to the Namekians in the various villages. The Dragon Balls being located inside each Namekian village allowed the process of the gathering of the Dragon Balls to be much more efficient. Guru tells Goku and the rest of the Saiyans to sit down. He would tell them a story. The story of Katas and the Nimbless Namekian. Goku listens to the story intently while the other three Saiyans just listen half-heartedly. Halfway through, the skies of Namek suddenly turn dark. Vegeta looks outside with a little curiosity but eventually dismisses this fact when the skies go back to normal soon after. He assumed that it was probably some part of the planet Namek's lunar cycle. Unbeknownst to the three Saiyans, a wish has been made to the dragon Purunga on the other side of the planet. Kami has been resurrected, and thus has Piccolo Jr. as they both look around in confusion. Piccolo Jr. can't seem to remember what had led to his eventual demise, because when Kami ended him, he was still unconscious. Meanwhile, Kami himself was also quite confused about his predicament. How had he came back to life without the presence of Dragon Balls on Earth? Kami and Piccolo Jr. suddenly realized each other's presence as they jumped backwards from each other. Piccolo asked Kami what nonsense he had put, but Kami asked Piccolo that same exact question. Piccolo and Kami look at each other suspiciously before each separately taking off. Kami to Kami's lookout and Piccolo to the wilderness. Popo feels a familiar key flying upwards. He couldn't believe it. He didn't want to believe it. Had Goku managed to achieve the impossible? As Kami comes back onto the lookout, Popo immediately hugs Kami. As Kami hugs Popo back, albeit unwillingly. Kami asks Popo to recount all the events since his death. As Popo starts to recap everything that occurred so far. Meanwhile, Piccolo Jr. arrives in front of Tian Shin Han's house. Tian walks out, with Chao Tzu behind him glaring straight at Piccolo Jr., asking him what he wanted. Goku had already briefed them what might happen while he was off planet, so Piccolo Jr.'s resurrection didn't come off as much of a surprise to Tian. However, Tian refused to tell Piccolo Jr. anything. After all, Tian still saw Piccolo Jr. as a force of evil. This version of Piccolo Jr had never redeemed himself. Piccolo Jr. smirks, asking if Tian thought that he was giving him a choice. If Tian didn't tell him what he knew, he would end him. However, Piccolo Jr. soon realizes that he was in quite a bit of a predicament. As even Shaozu was quite a bit stronger than him, Piccolo Jr. gets his ass handed him by Tian and Shaozu as Tian and Shaozu beat him up relentlessly. Tian obviously wasn't gonna end his life but giving him a beating wasn't something that was ruled out either. Piccolo Jr. crossed away utterly humiliated and injured, and still without any knowledge of what had transpired. Meanwhile, Goku and the three Saiyans bid farewell to planet Namek as they returned to Earth. Vegeta, at this point, was utterly and absolutely pissed off. They followed Kakarot all the way here, only for Kakarot to receive a huge power boost. This entire trip basically didn't benefit them at all whatsoever. But Goku's immense power made Vegeta reluctant to voice any of his complaints out. After all, 
the gap between Impa Power was so immense and too ridiculous to get at this point in time. Goku could kill any of them anytime he wanted to. So let's go back to planet Earth. Kami was glad that Goku had made a good guardian in the past few years. But the lack of Dragon Ball specifically on Earth was still concerning. Even though he was no longer the guardian of Earth, looks like his presence was still required on Earth purely for the Dragon Balls. And now that Goku and the rest were far ahead of Piccolo Jr, Piccolo Jr should be a non-issue from now on. Goku returns to Earth and immediately goes to greet Kami. Kami and Goku share a heartfelt reunion, while Vegeta and the other two Saiyans go somewhere on Earth to train. They will still lose cannons, but Vegeta's pride prevented him from destroying Earth before he defeated Kakarot in a fair fight. However, that fight will have to wait, because Frieza has finally embarked towards Earth, keen to figure out what the three Saiyans have been up to in the past one plus year. Obviously, everyone is unaware and unprepared for Frieza's arrival. As Frieza makes his way towards Earth, in the meantime, Kami decides to remake the Dragon Balls. The constant presence of threats on Earth meant that Earth having their own set of Dragon Balls was basically essential. A few days later, Frieza's ship has finally arrived, hovering above the Earth's atmosphere. The three Saiyans sense the sinister power but aren't actually aware that this was Frieza. After all, they just learnt how to sense key just a while back. Though, this power was monstrous, only behind what Goku had displayed on Namek. Goku and Kami stand on Kami's lookout, looking towards the ship in the atmosphere. They didn't know who this was, but from what they were sensing, this person didn't seem like they were here with good intentions. Frieza makes his way onto Earth as the humans all gather along with the three Saiyans as well as Goku and Gohan. Observing the ship closely, the three Saiyans now know that Frieza had somehow managed to get a hold on their location. Vegeta tells Goku to watch out. This was Frieza, the one that enslaved the Saiyan race, the supposed strongest person in the universe. Goku was excited. Goku clenches his fist in slight trepidation as the Space Emperor walks out along with his Frieza soldiers behind him. Several other Frieza soldiers also spread out behind the Space Emperor along with Zabon and Dodario. Frieza asks the three Saiyans how they have been and what they have been up to. Vegeta tells Frieza to mind his own business. They didn't need to tell Frieza about everything they did. Frieza looks around. Everyone there looked pretty unremarkable and unassuming except the kid with the tail and the man in the orange uniform. In fact, somehow Frieza knew that they were both Saiyans. Gohan's existence rang many alarms with Frieza. Somewhere out in the universe, the monkeys have been reproducing. Frieza has had enough. He tells his soldiers to spread out as they surround all the Z fighters. Frieza beckons Zabon and Dodario forward to tell them to take care of the Saiyans. If they failed their task, they will be severely punished. Zabon and Dodario gave an audible gulp. Frieza's punishments were definitely the worst, so they stepped forward, prepared to dish out as much punishment as they could. The rest of the humans prepared to fight as well. Frieza didn't bring his entire army with him, but it wasn't a small force either. As the fight begins, there is absolute chaos everywhere. The Z fighters here weren't a great deal stronger than the average Frieza soldier, so this made the fight even tougher. Thankfully, Reddits and Napa were helping the humans out, and they were a great deal stronger than the average soldier, thus it kinda balanced things out. Meanwhile, Zabon and Dodario fight Goku and Vegeta together. However, they soon realized that they were extremely outmatched. Not even talking about Goku, who was at a base power level of 6 million by now, Vegeta was also at about 60,000, which means that Zabon and Dodario's power level of 20,000 plus is basically fodder to them. Even Zabon's last minute reveal of his transformation didn't help him survive much longer either. Frieza watches with slight intrigue. The monkeys had grown stronger in his absence. Oh well, guess it was up to him to eliminate them instead. Frieza steps up, now ready to kill all of them. Verdida grits his teeth as he retreats from the battle. This was utterly humiliating, especially for the Prince of All Saiyans. 
but no matter how much he didn't want to admit it, he wasn't ready for this fight whatsoever. Whether Vegeta wanted it or not, this fight was now up to Kakarot. Goku looks at Frieza with an expression of utmost seriousness etched onto his face. This version of Goku here isn't the same Goku we know from canon. Because Goku had let his guard down against Piccolo Jr, he had lost his friend and master Kami. So here, he won't make that same mistake again. And it was pretty obvious that this Frieza was much more dangerous than any foe he has faced since then. Goku didn't know whether Frieza was at full power just yet, but he didn't care to know. Without giving Frieza a chance to react, Goku rushes forward with extreme speed. His 6 million power level against a meagre 530,000 in Frieza's first form meant that Frieza received the worst beating of his life. Frieza frantically backtracks, trying to get some space, but Goku doesn't give him a chance to breathe as he continues to beat the life out of Frieza. Vegeta washes his all as the tyrannical space emperor Frieza slowly loses his ground more and more as Goku finally stands above a seemingly defeated first form Frieza. However, it was all just a lie. Frieza was faking defeat. He wouldn't go down just yet. A purposely light suddenly envelops the area as Frieza's body starts to change. However, Goku wasn't just standing around doing nothing either. Goku charges his Kamehameha as much as he can as he keeps pushing more and more power into it. In canon from the Reddit saga, a briefly charged Kamehameha pushed his power from 416 to 924, a 2.22 times multiplier. Goku hadn't really spent so much time training to improve his Kamehameha from back then, and he had been only a year since the Reddit's fight. So this Kamehameha here pushes Goku's power level temporarily to 25 million, about a 4 times multiplier. Goku yells as he pushes the Kamehameha towards Frieza. Frieza barely manages to get into his final form in time as he pushes against the Kamehameha. However, the Kamehameha overwhelms Frieza's defenses as Frieza yells in pain as the Kamehameha envelops him in a huge aura of blue light. Goku knew not to let his guard down though and Goku's instincts prove right. Frieza stood there, massively injured, but still alive. The beating Goku had given him before he transformed had sapped away a lot of his power, and this Kamehameha just injured him even further. But Frieza's power level still stood at a massive 30 million, 5 times higher than Goku's. Goku feels the immense surge of power, but before he even gets a chance to register it, Frieza rushes forward at immense speed, suddenly just right in front of him. Goku tries desperately to dodge or counter Frieza's next attack, but he simply can't react in time. Frieza punches a hole through Goku's chest, straight through his heart. Goku falls to his knees as Frieza ends him right in front of him. Everyone else watches on in pure shock and terror. Because Goku had almost killed Frieza beforehand, Frieza was much more afraid and wary of Goku. He wouldn't toy around with the monkey that almost brought him a swift death, instead to choose to end Goku right there and then. Gohan, who was present on the scene yells as he rushes towards Frieza. However, this version of Gohan never had his potential unlocked and never had the luxury of multiple Zenkais. Thus even a powerful rage boost does little to find a form Frieza as he dispatches Gohan as well. Everyone looks on utter shock and desperation while Frieza simply smiles sinisterly. That was a close one, but now it was time for them to die. Frieza charges a death ball when suddenly the skies go dark, but Frieza pays it no mind as he destroys earth and all its inhabitants. Unbeknownst to Frieza, Goku and Kami had gathered the Dragon Balls on Kami's lookout beforehand. Kami and Goku had agreed that in the situation that Goku dies, Kami would use the Dragon Balls to somehow salvage the situation immediately. Unfortunately, Frieza had simply acted too fast, killing Goku, Gohan, and then destroying Earth in all one fell swoop. Kami hadn't managed to act in time. So what now? Would King Kai be able to contact the Namekians? Well, actually no. Goku was actually pretty clueless on the general direction of Planet Namek in this version of events. 
and Vegeta, Nappa and Reddit wouldn't be able to keep their bodies. So the exact location of planet Namek is completely unknown. The destruction of Earth means that no Dr. Jiro and thus no Android Slash Cell Saga will occur. No strong fighters on Earth means not enough energy to be absorbed. Thus Boo will be revived way later on. When Beerus awakens, he does find Goku and Gohan on King Tai's planet. But this ultimately doesn't lead to much because they don't have any Dragon Balls to figure out how the Saiyan God ritual is carried out, nor are they strong enough to impress Beerus in any way. And they are not like there were enough Saiyans there in the first place to carry out the Saiyan God ritual. So basically, this series ends here on a bad note. I don't really want to advance into anything past Dragon Ball Super Broly, so there isn't much left to say. Frieza continues ruling the universe without the interference of any monkeys. Beerus continues on with his day without training any Saiyans. All the Z fighters live a happily ever after in the afterlife. And I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series and I'll see you all in the next one.